In general, it's the development of clinical trials, um, studying novel new therapies uh, for patients with advanced cancer for which there is no curative treatment. And what I've been interested in doing is collaborating with those people who are interested in, in investigating the genetics of cancer to better understand what particular targets, that is molecular targets, that exist within a tumor that may represent potential uh, targets for novel therapies that are already potentially even on the shelf, as well as for those uh, that may not be on the shelf yet, but may be actively in development. Uh, and so I think that uh, my goal is to develop a robust clinical trials program in all GU cancers, uh, of course, including bladder cancer, uh, looking at uh, a series of novel approaches to target specific molecular alterations within the tumor that may be driving that tumor. Uh, in patients. BCAN is an extremely important organization. It's really the, um, a grassroots organization in bladder cancer that was started um, by uh, Diane Qualley and her husband. Uh, and the mission is really to develop uh, awareness about bladder cancer, and not only develop awareness, but actually create a forum for discussion among patients and among experts in the field uh, toward better treatments. Uh, my involvement is not only as a scientific advisory committee member, but I'm actually the chair of the think tank meeting uh, this year. And the think tank meeting is an extremely special uh, meeting that is, uh, consists of uh, invited uh, individuals who have an expertise in bladder cancer as well as patients, having both patients and scientists, clinicians sit at the same table, uh, allows for a more robust discussion of what the issues truly are in bladder cancer. And so we as, for example, translational researchers trying to bring, you know, novel agents uh, to the bedside um, may not be thinking about some of the survivorship related issues that are so important. That is, what are the potential side effects of some of those agents down the road to those people that are ultimately cured of their bladder cancer. One of the things we also recognize is how difficult it is for patients to live at a distance, particularly with a devastating disease, to travel that long distance to get their treatment. So the ability to practice excellent oncology, incorporating clinical trials that may have a significant benefit for a patient close to their home in a community that they're comfortable with uh, is a tremendous opportunity uh, to provide the best care possible. There's been a series of therapies that have been developed, targeted type therapies, based on what we have learned about the biology of the tumor. And so understanding the biology of the tumor in kidney cancer has led us to the development of therapies which actually have led to a prolongation of survival in patients with kidney cancer. And now we have multiple therapies targeting different pathways uh, that are beneficial uh, to patients with that disease. In prostate cancer, the past two to five years has really been extraordinary. Uh, we went from having a single chemotherapeutic agent that offered a survival benefit, docetaxel chemotherapy in patients with prostate cancer, to now the approval of a immunological type approach uh, in patients with prostate cancer offering a survival benefit, a new hormonal agent uh, in prostate cancer, as well as a novel chemotherapeutic agent that offers a survival benefit uh, in patients who progress after standard chemotherapy in this disease, with a series of additional clinical trials that are offering tremendous promise uh, and are likely to head toward FDA approval in the treatment of patients with prostate cancer. I love research, and uh, I love um, academic medicine, teaching residents, teaching fellows. Um, but it all really ultimately goes back to the patient. You know, it's those clinical trials you write that you're bringing back to the patient. It's the residents and the fellows that you're teaching uh, when you walk out of the room that all ultimately goes back to the patient. And so for me, the uh, best part of my job is uh, developing a relationship with people, and all of a sudden you have this bond that develops in trust uh, that's really born out of them having a disease and you being the person that they are so hopeful uh, will be able to help them.